you should relax with some video games and some better buddies. Welcome back to Better Buddies. I'm your host, RJ. With us this week, we have Calvin. Yo. And James. Hello. How are you guys doing? Too bad. Too bad? No, not too Yes, too, too bad. bad. Yeah, really bad. Oh, no, man. not too bad. Tired, tired, but good. Yeah. What about you, Calvin? Sticking with too bad? Uh, good. Sorry, I just got suddenly distracted because I get, uh, with the streamer I used to always watch is streaming Hatsune Miku again. Is this one of the? Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, one of those. What the? What the fuck are those girls called? You uh, are you to, to, VTubers or that's yeah, my VTubers. latest <laughs> assumption. That was my latest <laughs> obsession. No, this is the original. Uh, Hasumi oh, yeah. Miku is just like the uh, fake like idol where it's like um, just yeah. basically a soundboard, and you can and of like all the consonants and syllables and stuff, and you create your own music using this program. Um, and there's like rhythm games, and this dude is like amazing at them. So it's really fascinating. You could watch him, but I get me distracted. I gotta turn this off. It was obnoxious to be here for this podcast. Does she still make new stuff? Do those Vocaloids still make like new music? Uh, yeah. Well, like, the they... thing with Vocaloids is they're not a person. Um, they're played yeah, up to be a person. Like... Um, like but computer, technically, right? I could yeah. make a Hatsune Miku song. So when it comes to those songs, it's about oh. the. Uh, it's it really is about the people that you if you want to focus on it Hatsune Miku is just kind of the name of the voice and the name of the program that you use. What's well, like um, a fucking keyboard, basically? Little bit, little okay. bit. It's just <laughs> like you you like I said, it's just like the consonants or the syllables and the phonetics, and you create your mm-hmm. own music with this fake singer. That's why it sounds somewhat robotic. Uh that's interesting. Okay. Question. Yeah. I knew it was like a robot. You didn't know that different people were behind it. Yep. You uh, just buy the program. Speaking of VTubers hmm. and yes. Hatsune Miku and the like, did you guys hear about the wine that one of them has? No. I just saw an article headline that apparently one of those people who does that now has a branded wine. I'm not surprised. A vocaloid? Uh, wine? That's cra- That's awesome. A vocaloid or VTuber? I'm pretty sure it was a VTuber, like, kind of thing. Okay. VTuber. Oh, it's Pequera. Calvin, oh, you're yeah. not supposed to know who that is. But she's great. She's hilarious. <laughs> she's a rabbit person. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, and she, she has end, wine. She ends awesome. every sentence with Pecco. I can't fucking believe that a YouTuber's merchandise is wine. I mean, I can, Love but... Calvin. Oh, man. Uh, it's a... Uh, 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 Hollow Live is like insane with the amount of like branding they have a ton they're in a ton of like video game like mobile game stuff they're mm-hmm. they've been in those for a while uh yeah no the, their branding's ridiculous they had like a whole display in akihabara i'm glad it makes you happy uh the initial run sold out immediately i can't say i'm surprised 35 bucks for a 500 milliliter bottle of plum wine. <laughs> Holy shit. Wait, how much? $35. Okay. Oh, that's not too bad. It's that's pretty like, expensive for yeah, that's more than milliliters of, milliliters of plum <laughs> wine. Maybe okay. Well, our, uh, our better buddy's icebreaker this week has nothing to do with that. Uh, <laughs> it should. It could. It could, actually. <laughs> yeah. Looking at the question... <laughs> Uh, what is <laughs> what is your best insult without swearing? Oh, I don't want it to be about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you watch V <V2>. two. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. No, I actually think they're interesting. But yeah, I'm, I, let me actually pick one. Uh, I'm going to go with one that I particularly like. Although, yeah. if you use it, uh, you have to hope that the person you're using it on understands what it means. Uh, I curse you. And my curse is for you to be what you already are. Did you hear that from somewhere? Uh, I picked it up out of a book once. 
And I think oh. it's pretty good because the implication is there is nothing else in existence quite as bad as you. I actually have something similar to that. Go for it. I feel bad for you. That's just what I would say. It just sucks. <laughs> Whatever you're doing sucks. Eh. Eh? I, like, I get it. Just... It's, it's, a sh- yeah. it's succinct and effective. I just, I, can't, I, I prefer a little bit more poetry with it. But it is effective. <laughs> That's fair. What about you, Calvin? Uh, I had to look up Wheel of Time insults because there's some pretty good ones. <laughs> uh, such as uh, Bloody Ox of a Thimble-Brained Man. Um, Fish-Loving Scavenger. Goat Spawn Toad. Oh. Those... Yeah, there's some good ones. Oof. Those are, those are Wooden-Headed rough. Buffoon. Zine, that's... Oh. You really can't get past that, like, older uh, style of writing. Like, I know Real Time's not old, but, like, it's aiming for that time period, and they like have some great stuff. Like, fantasy-esque, yeah. I don't think it has to be old. I think it just has to be written well. Like, there's some pretty great insults in, like, modern books. Are you a you clown know? now, James? <laughs> no. No. That was, that was not the horn on your clown car? That was not the horn on my clown car. What the fuck was that? Pretty sure it was the horn on your clown car. Right, Calvin? <laughs> what? You, you didn't hear that? <laughs> eh, eh. No, I didn't. Was that you? No, I, I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. So James has a ghost car. Yeah, that's right. it. A ghost clown just like car. That, just like that Stephen King novel. Ghost oh clown car? God. Well, just a ghost car, right? Isn't it like Christine? What? What? Yeah, yeah there's a Stephen King Stephen. book or short story about a ghost car, I swear to God. I thought it's the like Stephen King car people. thing was where like the ghost cars all suddenly came alive car. for like four hours and terrorized the gas station. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, it's yeah, Christine. Car, 1958 yes. Plymouth Fury possessed by what <laughs> went supernatural forces. Oh, it's so stupid, but that's awesome that someone really it was. There's a film ad- adaptation directed by John Carpenter. Huh. Dude, there's a Kim Possible episode that references that movie. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm dead serious. I'm, I, yeah, the car comes alive. Nice. Oh, I've never so... seen it or read the book, but yeah. Yeah. Good old Stephen King. That, that's, that, that takes us into our next segment really well with uh, Better Buddies Recommend, <laughs> where we recommend a piece of media to enjoy. YouTubers. Well, I'm going to start so Calvin has more time to think. <laughs> um, first, I want to say I did actually take your recommendation last... Finally, Calvin. And I watched the first episode of... Uh, why is the show name escaping me right now? Altered I need Carbon? It? Altered Carbon, yes. I watched the first it's episode so of It's so good! Carbon. It was very enjoyable. I will be watching the rest of it. The problem is... I'm currently binging Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> yeah. So I I'm on season two. Nice. And it's a it's a restart binge because like two years ago I tried binging it, and I got through like season three or four, and then my access mm-hmm. to it was cut off. But now I've got access again, so I'm watching it again, and I started from the beginning. What did you like about the first episode of Altered Carbon? The thing I liked about the first episode of Altered Carbon was how well they managed to convey everything about the world very yeah. fast and easy. Yeah. And like the above the clouds rich people thing and the below street level grossness and the in the one scene where he's in the body and leaving and like getting into the world in a span of a minute you're introduced to the idea of being re-sleeved into a new body and the uh societal pros and cons on the issue so it was all just very well crafted to get you into this world right away i uh i really like that scene in the beginning where he gets uh gunned down that was very well done the the opening scene was very well done that like sets it all up like the tone of the show and kind of like i don't know i thought like it actually looked pretty good too and I was like, that's the thing about Altered Carbon is it actually, it doesn't look too bad. 
there's some CGI that's kind of like hokey mm -hmm. and other stuff. But then there are some scenes where it's like, this looks pretty cool. Like they I do a good like job it. of hiding a lot of the like uh what was CGI that would like really distract you. Yeah. And like they keep a lot of the shots more interior and there's only and could, which is great because then they didn't have to spend like a huge budget conveying this massive world they could just like kind of imply it off screen yeah yeah the, the little stuff like the little details are well done like a lot of the cgi with the stacks and stuff like mm -hmm. don't they have to put it in like that looks that looks decent um poe looks good honestly that's his name right yeah poe is the uh the, the ai hotel mm. Oh, the, I don't think RJ's met him yet. No, no, because he's the he's the um he's the hotel. Oh, his first episode, concierge. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. really love that hotel. He's great. I'm so glad to know that he's in more than one one episode. I want to know what made them pick him. Uh, like, I want to. So uh, my yeah. guess, having seen nothing but the first episode, is a Poe was a drinker and a um enthusiast for Louse. a variety of uh questionable delights uh it is poe is also that very fine line between uh, very melancholy there was the sad yeah, stuff be... there's the yeah. attempts for happiness in his writing but he never really quite got there he actually he got really famous with raven like yeah. he actually did tours where people would come and hear him hear him say it. Oh um, yeah, he was he was famous in his time, but he was yeah, but it's always a very overall, melancholy person. Yeah, no, he's a very tragic figure. I think it's because like he was probably kind of a piece of shit, but he was also like you probably also felt bad for him. You're like, oh god. Funny yeah. thing, funny Poor thing. Guy. Uh, Poe's <laughs> literary rival after Poe's death actually went to his like wife yeah. or his mom or somebody and was like. Oh, he was, he was, so, they, the, the rival went up to this person was like, he was such a good author. I'm an author. I know what to do with all these works. I'll handle the, I'll handle his writings. I'll handle the obituary and ruined him. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like, it seems about right. What a, yeah. What a piece of shit move. <laughs> well, that's why part of the perception around Edgar Allan Poe has been like, that he was a negative that like, Oh, they found him lying drunk and dead in the streets. And he was a drunkard all the time. And he swore at people and was awful. It was like, because of that dude. Nice. But yeah, yeah I really enjoyed the first uh, episode of altered carbon. I'll be watching more. And I also recommend Brooklyn nine, nine because it seems to strike that good balance between the, uh, uh, the the character balance of everybody is interesting and can hold their own that Parks and Rec had for its main cast, but it's a smaller setting in the way The Office was. It's lighter than Parks and Rec. Like it's yes. a little more like nimble with the jokes and stuff like that. It's because Andy Samberg is like he's pretty quick. Like, oh he's, yeah, yeah. It not all of his stuff lands, but like I don't know, he's pretty quick. It's good. And I think that's part of why I enjoy Brooklyn Nine Nine is it's all working towards a comedic fashion, but because not everything lands, it, it doesn't feel, uh, quite like, it doesn't feel like a straight up parody or anything. Mm -hmm. No, they definitely, there's like some decent, uh, like character development and stuff like that. I, I still think Parks and Rec is the best for character development out of those three sitcoms. Oh yeah. Um, and I think, I think Brooklyn Nine Nine is the funniest. I have to give, uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine credit though, for being so similar to Parks and Rec in terms of cadence of line delivery, because yeah. my mom, who had never seen Brooklyn Nine Nine, came in while I was watching and was like, well, "What's this?" And I was like, "Oh, it's Brooklyn Nine Nine. It's a cop show, comedy cop show." And she's like, "Oh, it it reminds me a lot of Parks and Recreation. The way they say the lines." It's like. Oh, huh. It does now that I think about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is obviously written by the same people and stuff like that, but no, they, they definitely have, like, they've perfected a certain type of, like, delivery. Yeah. Um, Because they, they also made it, that episode, or that show, The Good Place. Mm-hmm. Which, I've, I haven't, I've watched, like, a few episodes of the show. I don't like it as much as, like, other people do, but... I don't think I'm, it's a bad show. It's not my thing. I don't think it's a bad show. I just don't. Yeah, it's not my thing. 
But yeah, those are my recommendations. Oh yeah. What uh what do you guys got? Uh can't go. <laughs> I'll go. Yeah. Um Eyes Like the Sky, which is an album by this band King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. What? Sounds really it's a fantastic yeah, I know. name. <laughs> yeah, I know. It like sounds dumb, but they're great. They're awesome. Um they're an what Australian like, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I can't believe I get to type this into the episode description. <laughs> They're an Australian rock band out of Australia. <laughs> and uh, I, mean, I, can't remember, yeah, I can't remember like what city they're from. Um, but yeah, they're really good. They're very like diverse. Um, Wait, what's the album? Not the most amazing. They're, uh, it was called Eyes Like the Sky. And it's basically like a Western story told over nine songs. It's oh. awesome. So it's, it's kind like of rock opera esque. Kind of. It's like a single narrator telling somebody's story, and he's got a, it's like a great voice. It's this great, old, like, West voice. It just sounds like craggy, and it's awesome. Cool. And it's, uh, they're like, like guitar. It's, it's like each song is a song, but this narration takes the place of the lyrics. It's really cool. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll and put that on my list. They're known, like, they're not... They don't always hit, I don't think. I've only listened to two albums of them, and they have like a lot. Um, so they're very like verse, but yeah, they're pretty cool. I would definitely recommend both Eyes Like the Sky and uh, King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard. That reminds uh there's a the I, band I Fight Dragons is a similar album. I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head. I saw you post your like Spotify thing or whatever, RJ. Yeah. And you had I Fight Dragons on there, and I was like, that that band sounds familiar. Um, I, I looked them up, and I I had never heard of them before, but they were Chiptune, and I love Chiptune. Oh. So I listened to their most recent album, and it's fantastic. I freaking love it. Oh, dude, I I'm so glad you have uh, circuitously got around to that recommendation of mine, because I've played some of their stuff for you uh yeah i'm sure you have <laughs> uh, no yeah i, I know and for I, a fact that's I have. probably that's probably why i recognize the name and i'm sure i said something that i liked it then but i just never got around to listening to it punch drunk destiny yeah that sounds familiar yeah yeah uh their their latest album though the canonized is a little less chip mm. like there's bits of there and it's kind of more just straight rock but they have a song called oh the places you'll go oh, that i yeah. freaking love well, and I love I've I've I know I've told James about this, but part of the reason I love that album is because it is a journey of because the first song is um I've got it pulled up here. The first song on that album, Canonize, is Artifact, Artifact. which is all about rock and roll is dead, destroyer destroyer merch. Yeah, you have told me about this album before. I was trying to think oh, of like, I need to yeah. pay attention to the lyrics. Yeah. Pay attention <laughs> to the lyrics because I just really uh, enjoyed it. <laughs> Because, like, Artifact is, rock and roll is dead, mm -hmm. maybe our kids will bring it back, but it's dead now, it's gone, get over it. While we're still young, the devil you know, one and done, th while we're still young through uh, Punch Drunk Destiny are all, like, getting beat up, awfulness, sadness, like, the th stuff you've lost, like, pain and hurt and that sort of stuff. But then, oh, the places you'll go, I think, oh. Uh, the, all the places you go in Lighthouse on the Sea are, like, these redeeming things of, like, yeah, I'm a little bit older, but it's not a bad thing. I've done these things, and I can guide... I may not be the one who's going out to sea now and going on adventures, but I can guide other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, see, uh, that's really interesting. I'll, have to def I'll definitely have to actually pay attention to the lyrics now, but... I've had this conversation with James before, and who whose philosophy do I follow, James, that you pointed out? <laughs> Nietzsche's, right? Yeah, it was, oh, yeah, yeah. It was Nietzsche. Um, yeah. Basically, for me, when it comes to music, uh, the lyrics, you have to genuine, generally, you have to point them out to me <laughs> because to me, they're just part of the song. And I, I may, I'll even know the lyrics and be able to sing an entire song. But if you ask me what that song is about, I'll be like, I have no idea. I'm not paying any attention. The lyrics to me are literally just another part of like the melody and song. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just do not pay attention. <laughs> they they have like no depth to me. It's very surface level. 
Yeah, it's... I'm kind of at a weird point, and I think I've moved more towards, like, lyrics having meaning. Because, like, mm. what's that one song? Pumped Up Kicks. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's about a yeah. school shooting? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> no, nor did I until James pointed it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just like, oh man, this is a great song. <laughs> Once it got pointed oh. out, I just, I can't unhear it. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, I tried to listen to some of their other stuff and I couldn't get into it, but maybe I didn't try hard enough. But Pumped Up Kicks is like, it's like, it's kind of corny, but at the same time, it's like, oh my God, they wrote this. Like they, because it was written in, in like, like the mid 2000s. Yeah, I was going to say oh. it's. And when was like Columbine? Wasn't 90s. that like. Uh, was yeah. it was it nineties? Was it yeah. like turn of okay? No, so it was pretty, kind of I'll look it up, but I'm pretty sure it was nineties. Yeah. So Fuck. and what was your recommendation, Andrew James, by uh <laughs> what was the oh. Mr. Gizzard? <laughs> Wizard Lizard Wizard. King Gizzard. King and Gizzard, Lizard sorry. Wizard. Also, James, you are hundred percent correct. Uh ninety nine. I Holy thought it was early nineties. Damn son. Yeah. I don't know when that album was released, but it wasn't too. It was like maybe six uh, or seven. Uh, two thousand five or two thousand six. Toss to the people torches. Two thousand eleven. Oh wow! Fuck. That was later. Oh, they love you. A little more. So Calvin, what are you going to recommend? Uh, 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 I don't really have anything. <laughs> so you're not going to recommend uh, Canonized by I Fight Dra- the album by I Fight Dragons. No, I feel like that's a cop out. Fair. Um. Oh, I know. This is probably gonna be. This is like kind of basic, but um. And I'm a little late to the game, but I wait. When did I find it? I think it was this summer. I went on a really big, uh, kick of those. Um, because I was looking for music for work, mm-hmm. and um, this has been around forever. But I finally got into some of that like lo-fi hip hop chill <laughs> stuff. Oh, um, the exact same thing happened to me at work. I'm not mm-hmm, even kidding. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. and so I I I skewed more towards because my other interests. There's like a whole genre of like Japanese and Asian lo-fi hip hop, um, mm-hmm. which kind of incorporates more traditionalistic Asian sounding music with that lo-fi stuff, which I really dig. Um, but I've also been listening to a lot of the uh classic chilled cow um stuff because he's that guy that does the um like the the if you think lo-fi it's like the chill beats to study to or whatever that that's chilled cow okay with like the anime girl that was like just like on is like a stream that goes forever um i i use uh youtube music and he's got he doesn't have a ton um because I think he mainly just does that stream, but he's got like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and 3 a.m. study sessions. They're all an hour a piece, and those are I really dig those. So she's like I've, writing on a desk, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've never listened to lo-fi hip hop that I'm aware of. What? Do I, I don't, even know anything? <laughs> no, I I don't think so. Um, I don't know hip hop at all, so I don't know how close it is but from my very outsider perspective it doesn't strike me as hip-hop now someone in the comments can come yell at me as to why i'm wrong because i probably am um but it, it doesn't fit the modern okay of hip-hop I okay good but, i mean like uh, it's got beats and stuff like that yeah, but yeah, yeah yeah it's it's there's a reason they call it like chill beats to study to it's yeah. it's it's just kind of the perfect background music that just like you can get lost in so it does that it has that good quality of music where it's like you can really get into the music hmm. but it's at the just, same time you can yeah. focus on your task and it will blend into the background and not distract you so video game music to an extent yeah like the same like design principles behind it yeah yeah, definitely. And there's typically no lyrics. Um, some of the ones that I listen to will have like sound bites um, from different things. Like one of them I know, had, like one of the compilations has a, um, one of the songs has sound bites from uh, Last Samurai. Um, uh, I, don't, 
I don't want to put a full stop, but I'm going to. Did you say compilations? Compilations? I? I don't know what I said. <laughs> Uh, it's just I'm I, I'm used to hearing the word compilation, and you went compilation. Yeah, compilation. Okay. RJ, don't Tell judge me. me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't judge you, but I'm going to chuckle a little bit at the different pronunciation. You guys make fun of my pronunciation all the time. Yeah, well, you say crick. Well, when you mean creek. <laughs> Hey, no, okay, we've actually settled this. We've settled it. Um, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Crick is a regional <laughs> dialectical yeah, barrier. Right. Well, I'm right. Hey, hey, no, fuck you, Cal. <laughs> no, 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 James, I... No, you I, know, no he knows James, you. James, oh, yeah. I'm going to open the can of worms, but Calvin is right. Uh-huh. As someone oh, who you. studied grammar and studied Talk dialects fiction. for all of one semester, Calvin's right. <laughs> I love damn it. He has academic backing. <laughs> He's credentialed. Uh, <laughs> uh, but awesome. Uh, but yeah, no, I would recommend uh, if you're looking, if you're stuck at home for work or school, or honestly just want to throw something on in the background where you do something, uh, just go to YouTube and just do like lo-fi beats, or just just you can just search lo-fi. Um, and there's a whole range of them, different kind of stuff. Like I said, I like the Japanese Asian style sounding ones, but you can just go with normal classic. It doesn't vary that much. It's good. So, the, yeah, there's a song I really want to recommend. Um, Winter Bokeh by uh, Idealism. That cool. would be one that I would say. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't really know the songs or artists. I really should. I just listen to the like. I just have like a playlist of hour long. It's not like, really like. Yeah, it's kind of more. I don't know. It's like a soft genre of music. So it's like anyone mm-hmm. can kind of get into it. It's not that it's bad. It's just like. Soft. Yeah, and a lot of them are very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, they're, it's good. Like they, it's they, good. They, it, yeah, I would put it on during like a certain point at a party, maybe if I was just with like. Uh, if it was a very, if it was like winding down or very chill, and you were going for the more yeah. intimate kind of feel, I could see that. Yeah. Cool. Potentially. Awesome. Uh, so before we get into giving any advice, I need to get into Marvel because oh boy, there have yeah, been that? some developments, folks. I've not, I've not heard about this. Alfred Molina is reportedly coming back as Doc Ock. Oh, fuck, wait, I did see this. <laughs> oh, I did see that. Yeah, Tobey Maguire, right? Uh, as far... So this is this is the problem, because there's been rumors for a long time now as to who would be coming back for what. And one of the most recent, like, literally, like, today most recent, as of recording this, was Charlie Cox supposedly coming back. He played Daredevil in the Netflix show. Oh, yeah, yeah. But... That's also a rumor I heard on, like, Bleeding Cool, like, months ago, like, a year ago. Is that for a movie he's coming back? Yeah, he's coming back for the next Spider-Man movie, theoretically. Yeah, wait, okay, so is this gonna be, like, a live-action Into the Spider-Verse? Because aren't there a bunch of different Peter Parkers in this? Like, I thought Andy Garfield. Uh, Interesting. Okay. So, as far as I can figure out, if I understand the movie, like, the where the movies come out, it's the... It's a Spider-Man live-action Into the Spider-Verse that will mix in with Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Interesting. Um, I hope... uh, One thing I hope is I actually like... One of the things I really like about the Spider-Man franchise... Maybe not... I don't know. One of the things I like about the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man franchise (laughs) is that it feels like... I don't know. The nice thing about Spider-Man is he always feels so separate. Like, New York is its own world, and he's kind of just doing his thing. I don't mind the Marvel intervention, but do you know what I mean? Like, I like that hometown feel of, like, Spider-Man, but I like, it's interesting when he goes outside. Like, he's a cool character just in general. I'm I'm inclined to believe that there's going to be some authenticity to it if what we think is happening happens. Because Sam Raimi is directing the next Doctor Strange movie. Really? Yeah. Interesting. He's, he's a multiverse of madness or whatever? Yeah. 
Okay. I hope. Okay. okay. He directed the original Spider-Man trilogy, and so if and Doctor Strange is currently on to be in the next Spider-Man. So, do you think now that like in um, Avengers stuff is over, the directors will have more control over like creative elements of productions with Marvel movies? Because historically no. they haven't. Oh, no. okay. Um, but the reason, well, I say no, uh, but I also think up until this point, at least while there has been more, uh, I guess, oversight, you want to say on it, it uh, hasn't been so much of a, uh, Disney saying you have to do this. It's been Kevin Feige sitting down with the directors and saying, okay, we're all the people making these movies here is the idea we have for where we're going with this. How do we how do we work together to get us there? Interesting. Or at least that's the way it's been in, in I've gotten the impression of. Because like James Gunn does his thing. Yeah. Um and like that was part of why he's doing the new Suicide Squad is DC basically let the reins go and said, do whatever you want. To be fair, though, like, James Gunn, some of his other movies are, like, pretty graphic. Like, he definitely tones down, but he brings, like, a fun element to that movie that I don't think anyone else would have been able to. Yeah. Like, I, I think he's got a good sense of, like, what to do with those characters. Um, they are, like, as goofy as they are, they are some of the more interesting ones in the Marvel, like, universe, I would say. So, I'm... I... And, like, I... Ones I've seen, to be yeah. fair. <laughs> well, I know stuff. Marvel, bur- like, superhero burnout is a thing people were experiencing, mm-hmm. so I'm not, like, I don't think we'll ever get back to endgame level, which I'm okay with. No, that was, we like, had a, a once-in-a-lifetime thing. In a way, we're, like, really lucky, because it was, like, the biggest cinematic like, roller coaster of all time. It was insane. Yeah. Like, just all the hype around it. And for ten years. Like, that's nut. That's, I don't... With a single continuous franchise, like some genres have held precedence before in culture, but Man. never like a single franchise with that concentrated. Of a period. I might be about it's to insane. blow your mind, James. Maybe not, but <laughs> okay. I think you'll find this interesting. So if they do, if they do the Spider-Man movie, we think they're doing right now, based on okay. rumored casting lists, some confirmed, some not. We're gonna have this live-action Spider-Verse with all of the past and present live-action Spider-Men. Which yeah. will mean all prior Spider-Man movies are canon. Really? Because they're in multiverse. Oh, shit. Are they going to do, like, a whole Spider-Man franchise? Like, a whole... And because Sony has the Spider-Man one? rights, that means they could go make Spider-Man movies and still do the MCU Spider-Man. And they could go back and do more Garfield or more Maguire if they really wanted to. Wait, yeah, how does that work? Because Sony... So Sony has the film rights to Spider-Man. And all the Spider-Man characters. They got it after Fox let go of it. Because Mm. Disney got Fox, Disney has the Fox Spider-Man trilogy. But they can't make more movies for it, because... Sony owns Spider-Man. Sony has the rights to Spider-Man movies. But... Sony and... Disney worked out the agreement so they could do the MCU Spider-Man with Holland. Sony's Garfield duo didn't really work out. But for the most part, people liked the first two of the Remy trilogy. And with Black Cat and Venom and Morbius that they're all trying to do as, like, solo things, they're trying, but Spider-Man's cast doesn't really work without Spider-Man. But now they've got three Spider-Man to play with instead of the one. Interesting. So they're gonna pick. <laughs> so they could theoretically be like, oh, all these side Spidey character movies we're doing aren't MCU Spidey, they're Garfield Spidey, or they're Remy Spidey. Uh, I gotta ask, because you keep saying that, isn't it Raimi? I don't know. Sure, Raimi. Raimi. <laughs> Pronunciations, whatever. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, RJ. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I've earned it. <laughs> no, um... So do you think then that they're going to essentially have them compete to not in the like 
movies themselves, but because one has to emerge as the main Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> only one, there can only yeah, be like, one. <laughs> one is going to be like the Spider-Man. Like people are, it's like American Idol <laughs> or like a gladiator. <laughs> like I someone's got to be the Spider-Man. I think Holland so, is the Spider-Man. I think he's going to be the Spider-Man because he's, he's going to be the long. He's MCU and he's longevity. He's the youngest one. And he can make the most movies. Yeah, I could see, I could see Garfield doing it because he's got something to prove. And he, I don't he, think he wants to do it anymore. I think he hated it. He hated the popularity or well, the fame it got him. Yeah, fair. Because he's not been in anything major. Sense that exactly. Really. What if it wasn't like a comeback story? That'd be insane. Like what? I thought I read an article though that said he hated it. <laughs> oh shit! No, I don't doubt it because he also got a lot of crap too for it. Yeah, he did. Which I don't think he deserved. Yeah. Wasn't it that I heard a lot of stuff that people thought he was like too cool to be Peter Parker? Was it that he was boring? I, from what I remember, yeah, he was a he was an he wasn't like the nerdy nerd. He was that like kind of. Have you seen Stranger Things? Yes. He was Jonathan in Stranger Things, except slightly, like, more aware. And not, like, spat upon. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And it's a like, weird character. Yeah, that's... But, like... see what they're trying to do, like... And it, it was, like... It was more of a self-isolation thing of, like, I don't feel comfortable with other people. But okay. he was never, like, cool... Well, it's hard because he's attractive. Like, Tobey yeah. Maguire looks like... He looks kind of like an average guy. And Tom Holland looks like a kid. A kid. So, so it, like, works. But Andrew Garfield looks like... He's very like he's very handsome. So it's hard to pull off, like, Oh, I'm so socially awkward. And, like, I get rejected. Which is a big part of Spider-Man's character because he is. But it's hard to believe. You're like, come on, that guy? Andrew Garfield? Yeah. He's the fucking nerd or whatever. So that's a hard thing to make work with Spider-Man, I think at least. Um, and I think that's part of why he was, he, it was more of a Peter Parker as a self-isolation than a, like, other people isolating him. Because, like, you can't have yeah. somebody that good looking being shunned by his peers. Yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe, but I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. But he also, just, Garfield's Spider-Man was, like, one of the quippiest after yeah like, holland is pretty good and holland is probably mm -hmm. like the best mix of parker and spider but garfield's spider was on point oh really like the banter and stuff oh yeah i mean really? there was the okay. scene where the, he goes to stop a mugger who pulls a knife on him he's like oh no my one weakness small knives yeah i remember <laughs> that i i enjoyed the amazing spider-man yeah i feel like i I don't know. I just, I really enjoyed that one. Um, I, I mean, at the time, I liked the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans. Um, the first one. The second one, I don't know. Um, I didn't really, I, I thought it was okay, but it didn't really grab me. And then the third one, I never saw. I've still never seen. The, um, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies are kind of like, they're almost like the Star Wars of superhero movies in the sense that they got like the whole thing started kind of. Yeah. People yeah. really take superhero movies seriously. Like seriously, yeah. Yeah, they weren't big things. Um, and I see what you mean, Cal, because they're kind of clunky. Like I, it's been mm -hmm. a while since I've rewatched them. They're kind, they do kind of feel like outdated. That's, it's like they're part of the time. definitely challenge. a product of their time. Like, it yeah. feel very early 2000s. Yeah, well, no, they're three yeah. had problems with the higher ups wanting more in it. Like they, the Venom <sighs> being in three was because of studio interference. It's awesome though because I think like Sam, I haven't seen any interviews with him or I haven't seen much with him, but I'm pretty sure he hated that movie. Oh yeah, just just from the way it's made. It's like, you can tell this guy doesn't give a shit in a way that he does, like, he doesn't care. Well, when you have, and like, it, a good script where it's like, oh, we're gonna build on James Franco's character, and we're gonna get... I think it was Venom that was forced in. We're gonna take... Yes, it was. Well, uh, and Sandman. Yeah, and Sandman. Sandman. I remember that from the trailers and stuff. Sandman yeah. was in it, but I don't know if he was forced. But, like, we're going I, to work on these two characters, and we'll focus on these two, and we gotta put Eddie Brock in it? Okay, what do we do with that? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the problem is the second like Sam Raimi Spider Man was built on a lot of sentiment. Like you were supposed to really feel bad 
Doc Ock as like the main villain. Like he was a bad, he did bad things, but he wasn't like a bad guy. Like he was just kind of overly ambitious or earnest. It's held up as the best of the trilogy. It is. Yeah. It's like basically their Empire Strikes Back. (laughs) Like people love that movie. Um, but the the third one with Eddie Brock, he's so cynical, and it's like that is a main antagonist is hard to pull off without the whole movie starting to feel like cynical. Yeah, um, he's just a dick. Like, there's no redeeming qualities about him. Not really. But you you do feel bad for him. It's been a while since I've I actually saw that movie in theaters, and I do like a basic bitch. I do love the dance sequence. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> all the cool. All the cool uh, <laughs> Emo or depressed or goth or whatever. All the cool Peter Parker stuff is awesome. It's perfect. Oh, I find it so awkward. Oh, it's but it's supposed to be. It's I like, know it is, cause... but I've never been one who, like, I don't want to feel awkward. Like, I just, yeah. the people on screen can be awkward. I don't want to feel it. I think the thing is, like, it's supposed to be like Peter Parker. I've talked to people about yeah. this before. I think it's supposed to be like, Peter Parker is a he's awesome. Like, he's a good guy. He's a nice guy. He's, like, a good man. Yeah. Um, But he's also kind of a dork. And that's what he and thinks like, cool people look like. That's what he thinks, like, yeah, cool people look like. It's like, this is what's cool. Um, Which is why it's so funny, because it's like, I think everyone's felt like that <laughs> to some degree, like, one way or another, maybe. Yeah. Um, But it's, and it's just so, it's awesome. The one thing I love about that scene is when he's, like, walking down the street, like, pointing to women. Like, Every woman is like a supermodel. They're all like, I'm not, they're not just like normal, like, oh, she's pretty movie extras. They're like runway models. <laughs> and he's just Toby McGuire. I'm also he just walking down the street. It's awesome. My, uh, when it was on Netflix a few, like six months ago or something, my brother watched it. And I remember that scene. And I'm pretty sure like all of them are also disgusted by him. And they, no, they just, they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> And it's it. That's what makes it so funny. Is like, I don't know. It's like, it's gross, but he's got confidence. So it's like, why not? You go, Toby McGuire. The fact that he committed <laughs> to it is very impressive. Like, good job. Oh, Kirsten Dunst as MJ was as Mary Jane was spot on. Yeah, Although, I think I yeah. did see someone point out that I didn't really think about too hard until like literally yesterday. She left. Her her to be husband at the altar to go chase spy to chase peter and it's like dude you really gonna commit to that when she has commitment issues <laughs> wait in what movie does she do that Isn't second that one the second one yeah it's on the second one ends no, like... she's like dating and about to marry j jonah jameson's son and <laughs> in her on the day of her wedding leaves him at the altar to go be with peter in his crappy apartment yeah, she loves him. She loves Peter Parker. She's like, hell yeah. But also, poor guy. But, I mean, like, is, I forget how they depict J. Jonah Jameson's son. Um, how does he do They don't do much with him, which is a shame yeah. because he's, like, a developed character in the books. Can we talk about how, like, awesome J.K. Simmons is in those movies? <sighs> he's so good. Like, he talked about commitment. He's great. <laughs> like, he just goes for it. It's like... One of the few live action portrayals where it actually feels just like straight out of a comic book. It's like, that's awesome. He, yeah. he went for it. And like, one of the things, <laughs> one of the things I love when they brought him back was not only the new spin they put on, but it's basically, they did it again, except they pulled it from the PS4 video game. I know. I love it where he's supposed to be almost like an Alex Jones, like... Type, right like yeah i think on the yeah. red or something that's kind of fun i like to think it's like a podcast he does in his spare time while running the paper like, oh that'd be kind of yeah funny. it it basically is which yeah it makes me a little sad because J- jameson was a really good reporter like he's pulitzer two-time pulitzer prize winner the dude is a good reporter in all other cases it's just spider-man I'm where it's completely blind <laughs> yeah why, like, yeah, like, why, do they ever really give, like, an in-depth explanation, like, oh, yeah. why he like, Spider-Man? Like, what, like, what's so, his actual metaphysical reason for hating Spider-Man? The reason J. Jonah Jameson hates Spider-Man is because of the mask. Uh, with police, firemen, soldiers, astronauts like his son, you know who they are. 
and you can like see them you you have like you can if they if they do something wrong you know who they are if they do something right you know who they are with Spider-Man he's hiding behind the mask and criminals hide behind masks like it's that this yeah he's technically helping people and Jameson goes off of, off the deep end trying to get him but in Jameson's mind Spider-Man is endangering people he is reckless he doesn't have the same oversight that say badged officials do and a lot of it like comes to a head really recently in the comics actually um Jameson lost everything he's not in charge of the paper in the comics his wife died was brought back to life in the cloning thing and died again Oof, that's right in his in Jameson's <laughs> arms um he was mayor for a while and got booted out of that. Uh, but so he's he was at his lowest point and he agrees to something to do something for a one hour interview with Spider-Man. And they sit down to have this interview and they go th- over it and Jameson is straight up like, yeah, this is you've ruined my life. <clears throat> and I I just and he explains how like you are uncontrolled and you can you have the mask you tie up the bad guy make a funny quip and you leave but we have to clean up the mess and you're not affected by any of it and that's when Peter unmasks to him and reveals like hey it's me I I know I have the guilt I I know what is happening and so, like, they wind up, like, reconciling and becoming friends, but it's a really, really sweet moment of, like, I've go- I'm going, th- we're both going through these hardships. That is awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, it was so well written. But yes, Jameson's whole thing is that he's, af- like, he's afraid, and he doesn't think Spider-Man is really being, like, responsible. It's and it's kind of like sad too, because in a way he's like right. Yeah. Angry. Like he like his reason it's like an empathetic one. They're like, yeah, I, I can understand that. Also, fun yeah. fact, uh, it's a little bit of a retcon, but they also in that like same time frame give a reason as to why J. Jonah Jameson hired a fourteen year old uh-huh. photographer. Uh he did his research on Peter when Peter like first came to sell photos. And found the article where about uh, Uncle Ben being shot, and he like he knew who Peter was, and he knew the photos weren't that good, but he helped him out anyways. RJ, I have a piece of Spider Man trivia for you. Try me. She was gonna say, <laughs> did you know that the actor who played uh, Kurt Connors in the third Spider Man um, played a in this movie called Happiness. Played a what? A pedophile. Okay. You know? <laughs> I wouldn't Have you ever seen the movie? <laughs> I wouldn't call I, it I Spider-Man know, trivia. Spider-Man <laughs> trivia that is it's just movie <laughs> trivia. I, I mean <laughs> Dude, no. I feel like it'd be more probably... I feel like a worthy trivia thing would be like, "Hey, Bruce Campbell is the doorman at the theater." He is. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, to be fair, Sam Raimi and him are friends. Time. Sam Raimi. Raimi, whatever. You said it in a different way that time. You're like Raimi. <laughs> Sam Raimi. <laughs> Sam Raimi no. and Bruce Campbell are the closest of friends. But yeah, fair enough. You gotta watch that movie Happiness, then RJ. You gotta watch it. It's awesome. I don't, but okay. Off bottom, I recommend it. Do it next week. Yeah, you already okay. used yours. You can't do two. Ha, 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 ha. It's against the law. Let's, fair. Let's, let's, let's do a, a little bit of advice. Because I had my Marvel tangent. <laughs> How to be a better buddy, where we give some real and some humorous advice. Uh, we're getting a little close to time, but we can, we can do some lightning round. First question. Is 22 too old to have sleepovers? It's too old to call him a sleepover. I was going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> you can have friends crash at your place, but you don't call it a sleepover. 
It's called say, Crashing at Your Place. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging out. Can we go with Slumber Party? No. No. Just check no. out. Like, it'd be very ironically. <laughs> oh my god, we're gonna have a slumber <laughs> party? Let's ironically have a slumber party. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Uh, we can have a pillow fight. Oh, you can't do that at a crashing? You could. I guess you could. Have both. Fair. But yeah, uh, don't call it a sleepover. Call it a crashing. Our next question... <laughs> Why do things suddenly change once you're 23? With the further details, 18 to 22 year olds are considered very young adults and get to pass on being immature, but 23 to 34 year olds don't get the same pass. I don't see that as fair. Mm. I feel it. My, my first reaction is it's worth noting that 35 and up get a pass on being immature. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I think I think I kind of get what this question is saying. I think it does change, but I think it's it changes because it's like I don't know. That's like the year most people are out of college. Like people around our age are getting jobs and shit like that. But I think that's why it changes. You really think we're that much more mature than we were like a year or two ago? No, but I think more's <laughs> happened. I mean, yeah, I think more's definitely happened. But yeah, maybe yeah. I don't know. Um, I do think things can change like pretty quickly in a year. What about you, Calvin? I don't know. I'd say the same, I guess. All right. All right. Third question. How can I look tough at school? With the further details, at school, some people call me vulgar, vulgar word or wuss, and I want to prove them wrong by doing something hardcore. Don't say fight someone because I don't believe in violence. Fight yourself. Pull a fight club. <laughs> That's violence. But not against another person. That's still fighting. Your gun. It's also violent. No, what? That's, that's violent <laughs> too. That's the worst answer. <laughs> How did no, you somehow find the worst answer? It's psychological violence if you don't use it. That's still Maybe. violence. Uh, so you get arrested. That's fair. Yeah, don't do that. Maybe you know, fucking bungee jump off the roof of your school. That's hardcore. Yeah. See. Especially if you don't have a bungee cord. Yeah, just <laughs> jump off the roof. Nope, wait, no, nope, go back. No, try not to die. Like, if you live, that'd be cool. Learn parkour. Those people are always yeah. the coolest. <laughs> I mean, it, most they of go, them are French. That's they go issue. around saying hardcore. Hardcore parkour. Or just stop thinking about what other people care about you. Yeah. Stop caring so, about what other people think about you. That's the sentence I want. Yeah, who gives a shit? Next question. Are you supposed to let someone know how dumb they are, or should you just let them be? With the further details, I know someone who is the typical quote-unquote jock. Plays sports, lift weights, but lacks a lot of common sense. Should I tell him he's a dumb, or should I let him be? And I want it to be noted that in the question, in the first three words, they misspelled the word suppose, because they meet, they put it in the present tense and they wanted the past tense. <sighs> These bastards. Alright, well, you know this jock they're talking about? I feel like he's gonna come beat you up, RJ. Oh. Why? <laughs> Correcting his grammar. <laughs> <laughs> so they're gonna ask their jock friend to beat me up? Yes. yes. Oh. I think... Mm, I don't I'm know. Like, Ignorance I think, is bliss. Just let it, it be. If you think he might hurt himself if he's, like, that stupid, like, <laughs> help him out. <laughs> <laughs> but... But yeah, I mean, like, who cares? Like, if he's being a dumbass, then yeah, uh, why not? Yeah, I'm gonna go with the the a phrase from my from Skylar, who's also been on the show before, of "You can learn something from anyone." And I'm paraphrasing, but it's the idea that somebody knows, so everybody knows something you don't. So yeah. he he's a super physical dude who plays sports and lifts weights. And lacks common sense, but you may have the common sense, but he knows all about being healthy and like proper weightlifting. So he knows something. That's a good point. I like that advice. That's, uh, yeah. Skylar said that? Yeah. <laughs> Skylar's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and our last question What do you do when you are not in a good mood, especially at the early morning? Fuck. Wake up. 
<laughs> no, James, <laughs> waking up is what puts you in the bad puts you in the bad <laughs> mood. Like, how do you deal with it? Go back to sleep. Um, Calvin currently is the best idea, James. Come on, try and beat it. Dude, I honestly think I just stay up because the worst moods in my morning are when I just can't go back to bed. It's like you want to, but you just like kind of sit there. Do you know what I'm talking about? You ever had that? You just can't go back to sleep and you really want to. I was going to go with coffee. Have some coffee. Some coffee. Uh, <laughs> I might become, I, 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 mean, I, I might start drinking coffee now and that kind of scares me. I mean, oh, yeah. it's just caffeine. I'm, yeah, it's, uh, what? It's just caffeine. Yeah, but. Good mix. It's a lot of caffeine. I already drink black tea, and I drink a lot of tea. And I'm already getting to the point where if I miss my tea, I start getting headaches. Ooh, um, you drink a shit cup of feel like I feel like coffee's just going to make it worse. It will. Would you drink, yeah. Would you drink them both at the same time? No. God, no. <laughs> that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, caffeine headaches. When I was working at my job, they were. it was a thing because I'd... Uh, on my worst days, I would wake up, stop at the gas station, get a thing of coffee, drive to work, and finish my coffee. After two hours, I would grab a Diet Coke out of the fridge. Another two hours later, I'd have lunch and grab another Diet Coke to take back with me after lunch. I'd have my afternoon break where I'd grab another Diet Coke. And then I'd go home. Yeah, see, I don't drink any soda, so I've never really had caffeine in my life until I started drinking tea. Um... And now I have tea every morning. Oh, also I get those like V8 energy things. And I have one of those when I get home from work. Oh. So I have like a thing of caffeine in the morning and then a thing of caffeine after work. Yep. Do V8s have caffeine in them? You can they get have... some energy ones. Yeah. <laughs> I did know that. It's funny. They have options. They have many options. <laughs> options. Uh, but no, I was reading about like all different coffee and like I'm, I – like being a nerd about weird random stuff and i was just reading about the art of like coffee and like pour over coffee and now i might end up dropping like 60 bucks on this like solid hand-blown glass like coffee pour over thing that looks awesome oh uh keep it keep us updated with your experiments because i am not somebody who would ever get into those sorts of things but also that means I have to get like an electronic scale of my own like grinding thing to grind the beans. <laughs> yeah. And then I also need a speci- I need like a specific type of kettle because they have this like gooseneck they call it spout and it's like more evenly pours the water so you can get a better pour over the grounds. And then you also have to be able to get you can get these ones that like heat the water to within one degree centigrade so that you can like get the proper temperature and then apparently there's ratios that you're supposed to use for the amount of co- like grams of coffee per milliliters of water that sounds like math i know it's great isn't it <laughs> what if it's like so what if it's like so complicated it looks so nice that it just looks like a meth kit like when it comes in oh it kind of does <laughs> <laughs> and i was like no he's ready to god for coffee jesse uh, like, we need the purest blend of Colombian beans. <laughs> oh no. Dark roast, bitch. Did you mix the Colombian and the Brazilian blends? They're tainted. That's Throw it all out. I never saw I that know. show. I've never seen it. I've seen, I think, I maybe like a bit of the first episode. I think maybe the first episode. I can't remember. But yeah, yeah. I've heard it's good. Calvin, I, I am genuinely interested to hear how that goes. Because, like I said, it's yeah, not something cool. I would get into enough to like do that but i am curious about the process we could have like a calvin's coffee of the week or something like that there we go yeah look at that so yeah you put your like filter in the top and you pour the water through it and it's like a whole like couple minute process of you like pouring this water and you have to like it takes a lot of practice and you have to find your own balance between how how much you grind the beans and like how you pour the water and what temperature the water is. I thought James was joking about this looking like a meth lab, but the box that that bottle comes in is Chemex. <laughs> I believe it's oh French. Chemex. It's dual purpose. <laughs> you can make coffee and meth. That'd be great. Cool. Uh, I think that's... This. What about that one? Oh, that man. Looks like a meth kit. So he, Calvin has just posted a picture of 
a large three-tiered wooden rack with the God. a bottle on the bo- a big round bottle on the bottom, one in the middle and one at the top, and it like drips out of the top one slowly, goes into the bottom one and like spirals down a tube into the final jug, and it looks like an old timey steampunk science f- kit. It looks like awesome. A, it looks like a distillery. It looks it's like a awesome. It's, an it's, like it's like you're brewing coffee moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. Uh, that, actually, how tall is that fucking thing? Uh, I don't. Uh, Thirty inches tall. It's more than two feet. Okay. Oh yeah, that's, that's impressive. Three. It's cool. awesome. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good spot for this week. What about you guys? Yeah, I'd agree. Cool. Now I'm just looking at crazy looking coffee makers. This one looks like a beaker thing, like a chemistry like set. He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that uh, the Archer episode, the very. First I just one? I was about to say I watched that episode last night. Did you really? <laughs> I did. <laughs> it's honestly one of my favorites. I like that one a lot. This is a good one. That Watch looks it. like a, a mini, like it's a rig, it's a big coffee thing. To like like an hourglass pour the coffee thing, but then it's got a tiny little desk for your coffee. That's the grinder. <laughs> it's the grinder for the coffee. It looks like yeah. That's a mixing bowl on a rat uh, on a hamster sized desk, and uh, you can't Ooh, tell me look, otherwise. Looks like a, the things they used in the 17th century to separate like chemicals. <laughs> All right. Like- Thanks for joining me this week, boys, gentlemen. A choice. Capadres, Broskis. Yes. Uh, thank you to the band Problem of Interest for letting us use their song Living in the Moment off the album Cross Off Yesterday. And I'm proud of the fact that I haven't messed that up in a long time. Uh, you can find them on iTunes and Spotify. You can find us on iTunes and Spotify. Leave reviews, follow us, all that good stuff. We're also on social media. We're on Twitter, at BetterBudCast. Use the hashtag BetterBuddies when tweeting. You can find us on Facebook, Better Buddies, where we now have Me Monday posts, so keep an eye out for those. And we have an email, betterbuddiescast at gmail.com. You can send us an email if you need advice. Uh, write a fan letter, hate letter, fan art, hate art, proclamation of love, declaration of war, uh, and if you prefer, mints or gum. If we get to 100 downloads... On a single episode, we will review some gum in a special episode. I'm so excited for that. we got to get to 100 downloads, which were over 570 last I checked. Total for the entire series. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, cool. Keep keep that up. Remember to like stuff on social media and share that with a friend. Because, like, comment, subscribe. yeah, if you don't, we'll easy. never get to 100 listens. Or we will, but it'll be like 10 years from now and we'll all have no teeth to chew gum with because radiation poisoning or something. (laughs) And last but not least, be a better buddy. What's the biggest actual explosive you guys have ever handled? Uh, Like the most powerful. I mean... I didn't handle it, but there was the uh, the howitzer. Oh, I was gonna say you fired the howitzer. Yeah. No, I never did. <laughs> but you didn't, really? you didn't get to do it. I was there, and I was offered, but I don't like loud noises, so it was enough for me to just be there. I was like, I'm good. I don't I don't need to be over there. Oh my god. Yeah. I think mine's a firecracker. <laughs> like <laughs> the biggest, the most powerful actual explosive I've ever handled. Yeah, I was trying to think. I guess fireworks. Um, you had that grenade, but wasn't it like dead? I mean, it, it was a head. No, nothing in it. It was literally just the shell of a grenade. Damn. Yeah, I've seen one of those before. It's not exactly illegal to just have a grenade. <laughs> I mean, nor is it safe. Yeah, <laughs> not safe. <laughs>